the hunt for Earth 2.0 is still on. We've examined intense red dwarf systems, massive super Earths, and alien exomoons. But so far, there's no place like home. There are all these criteria we have to tick off. A sun-like star, an orbit that puts it at about the right temperature, a solid surface, something that could retain an atmosphere. But a planet that appears Earth-like on the outside may not be Earth-like on the inside. One of the things that makes our world so unique is its plate tectonics, and that actually regulates our climate. The Earth's climate depends on cycles of materials, like carbon dioxide and water. Molecules move between the Earth's molten interior and the surface through active plate tectonics and volcanic eruptions. These cycles help to regulate the temperature and composition of the Earth's atmosphere. If we were to find another Earth-like planet out there and it had geologic activity, that means that at least it has the means to sustain the, the carbon cycle and all of these natural phenomena that makes this planet habitable and, and sustainable. How can we know what's happening inside a planet? A clue can be found in vast ranges across our world. Mountains. These topographical features are an indicator that the planet is alive and there is still processes happening underneath its surface. Mountain ranges are created when a planet's tectonic plates collide. And even though exoplanets are light years away, astronomers could work out whether their surfaces are smooth or covered in peaks. Those mountain ranges are poking out. And depending on which rotation the planet is in, the planet will appear very slightly bigger or very slightly smaller, depending on the silhouette which is being cast. These tiny changes in light could be the sign that an exoplanet is healthy and active. But we can only use this method when a planet is in front of its star. What if astronomers could use starlight itself to determine the geology of a planet? We think that planets form at roughly the same sort of time that stars form, and they all form from this same giant cloud of material. And so if you measure the composition of a star, then it seems reasonable to take those values and assume they're somewhat similar for the planets as well. Astronomers can work out what chemical elements are present in the star by splitting its light into different wavelengths. And any planets around that star will have a similar chemical composition. Composition is actually a really important part of whether or not it's actually going to be habitable. Um, the composition really is its geology. Rocky exoplanets are all made from the same basic ingredients. Chemical elements like oxygen, silicon, and aluminum. Change the balance of ingredients, and you get very different planets. If we have some idea of the, the composition of a rocky planet, we can actually use that to give us clues as to whether a world has or doesn't have plate tectonics. New research indicates that exoplanets with too much silicon and sodium form different types of rock than those on Earth, creating rigid planets where plate tectonics stall and carbon dioxide builds up with devastating consequences. Without active geology, we end up with maybe a Venetian atmosphere. 
that means there's a runaway greenhouse effect. It's gotten hotter and hotter, gases are baked out of the rocks, there's no way to actually rain them back out. Not a good place for life at all. And worse, the planet becomes a pressure cooker, waiting to explode. If we change the composition of a planet, it affects its tectonic system. That entirely changes how a planet loses heat. And the heat builds up and builds up and builds up, and then maybe there's a catastrophic overturn of the crust. The solid crust of the planet collapses. Oceans of lava bubble up, and a greenhouse atmosphere boils the surface. A violent end to a potential new home. Clearly, you need to know about the composition of those planets before you can start making statements about how habitable those worlds truly are. But there's something else that a planet needs to be Earth-like. An invisible shield that protects it from the dangers of space. Providing warmth and life-giving water and atmosphere. The hunt for Earth 2.0 has turned up plenty of planets. But for a planet to be like Earth, it has to check a lot of boxes. If you're really looking for Earth 2.0, then you're gonna have to find a planet that's the same mass and size as Earth, orbiting a sun-like star at about the same distance with a similar atmosphere and a lot of surface water that's in liquid form. Good luck. And on the list of requirements, an exoplanet's atmosphere is critical. It protects the planet from huge temperature swings. It protects the planet from small asteroid impacts. It protects the planet from dangerous radiation from space and from the star. It is almost literally a shield around the planet, protecting us from outer space. But it also has to be the right kind of atmosphere. Get it wrong, and the planet can have crushing, boiling conditions on the surface. Look at our own solar system. The sun's habitable zone includes three different planets, Venus, Earth, and Mars. But Mars has a thin atmosphere and is too cold. Venus has too thick of an atmosphere and is too hot. We're the only planet that happens to be just right. So far, astronomers have mostly had to guess if these exoplanets have atmospheres. But now, we're looking for them directly. Searching for Earth-like atmospheres around Earth-like planets. This is incredibly hard to do. So in order to, to look at the details of these atmospheres and the glare of the star requires incredibly precise technology and precise measurements. Astronomers detect atmospheres by watching a planet pass in front of the star. A small fraction of light shines around the edge of the planet and through the atmosphere where molecules like water, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide absorb particular wavelengths of light from the star. If we can see the light of the star shining through uh, around the planet, we can maybe deduce some information about does it have an atmosphere? What are the properties of that atmosphere? How hot is it? Uh, what's it made out of? That's how we'll be able to determine if things in the atmosphere might indicate that the surface is hospitable to life. So far, we haven't seen any exoplanets with atmospheres that we could live in. But that's about to change 